charity evokes thoughts of compassion and altruism, and occasionally just how it is. However, charity is big business these days, and by their very nature, have to be mostly parasitical. One charity that has been around for over 20 years and now has the spotlight upon it is Common Perks. That spotlight is manned by the tenacious Brian Gerrish of CP Exposed, BBC Five TV, the BBC, the, B, the BC Group, and the UK Column Newspaper. It has and is being exposed as an anti-British organisation that used mind-altering techniques on its graduates to promote subversive anti-British behaviour. It absorbs vast amounts of public cash, infiltrates the judiciary, local and national government, the police, and heavily targets the young. Will we benefit by its existence? Let's find out. As Brian, who was a naval officer, who was a naval, naval officer and trusted to track Russian nuclear submarines, now has his teeth into CP and its, op and its operatives. Like a true British bulldog, won't let go. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Gerrish. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, we're just going to check out the volume on this. Can you hear me at the back? Yes. That's all right, is it? It's fine. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you very much for coming. And it's always great to see a, a packed hall because it makes it all worth it. And it's quite a long way from Plymouth, so I didn't know what to expect. So thank you all very much for coming tonight. I always have one problem, and that is that I never know whether I'm moving on from people who already know a bit, or I'm, I'm already, or I'm working for people who need to sort of start with the basics. So can I just ask you how many of you have actually learned or already know a bit about common purpose? Right, so it's, it's the overwhelming majority, but some of you don't. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is, I've got to say that the presentations are working, so I don't like fiddling around with them too much, but I'll go through reasonably quickly, because what I'd like to do with you tonight is get you talking with me as an audience, because it's the questions, and if you really challenge me on what I do know and what I can evidence and what I can't, that is when we really get the information out. Um, so we're gonna, I'm going to get through quite quickly and then I'm going to give you as much, possible, as much time as possible to talk to me. I've already had some slight glitches with this little white computer. It gets checked, we set it up and then it doesn't want to work. But I did hope that I was going to be able to get on the internet while I was here. And unfortunately I can't do that. So some of the things I wanted to show you, I can't. Um, I don't know if anybody knows whether you can pick up the internet in this area. I thought you would have been able to, but I can't. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. Okay, now the first slide um, here. <coughs> I'm going to talk about this charity called Common Purpose. Charities are very interesting things in this country at the moment because in Britain today, there's over 170,000 charities. And I think to myself quite often, if that's the case, we all ought to be in a lovely country where everybody's looked after and well fed and homed and everything else. If there's 170,000 charities, particularly when they're consuming £44 billion pounds a year. And you can check all those figures just by going on to the Charities Commission. So my, my story is about a charity, but it isn't really a charity. It's doing something very different. And I think I might surprise you. Now I'm doing a bit of advertising here because I also work with another loose group of people called the British Constitution Group. And we've had a number of um, conferences where we're trying to explain to people what's really happening in the world. And the next one coming up is the 31st of October in Euston, in the Friends Hall. And what we are going to do is put the government on trial for treason. So instead of using speakers just to talk about their particular topic and knowledge, 
we're going to try and represent the knowledge the speakers have as if they're giving evidence against the government. I was a naval officer until 1993. I left, started a business, and then quickly found that in Plymouth at least the, the society around me was rotten. Corrupt, money going missing, bullying, lies by the public authorities, redevelopment companies, as far as I'm concerned, embezzling money. I discovered some very nasty things, and when I tried to do something about it by putting my hand up and shouting, then I got some fairly unpleasant treatment, as did other people. And that led us to this common purpose thing. This is just a bit of fun for me. I know we've got at least one other Navy guy in the audience. So this was one of my ships, HMS Sirius, and that little blob on the back was a sonar that allowed us to go around tracking these things, which were ballistic, Russian ballistic missile submarines. So I put that up there because it's a bit of the old times, but I'm also trying to say to you, maybe I'm not entirely an idiot when I tell you some of the things that I think are going on now. So you paid me to go around the ocean having a good time and defending you, and I think I'm still trying to defend the public at large. And a few people are beginning to pay attention to what I'm talking about. Now with some volunteers, we've had a newspaper running called the UK Column. I've got to apologise because we haven't printed for three months. That's my fault, uh, because there's been a lot going on with family and other things. But we will have one out shortly. Uh, you can read it online at ukcolumn.org and you can also see what our website is talking about. Now this is the main thing, that there seems to be something wrong in the country. And I've used this at a lot of the talks and it always works. But if I say to you, does it seem that nothing works in this country? How many of you can sort of feel that that's, that's about right? Do you, you pick up something isn't working? It's very turbulent, there's crazy things happening, mad decisions. You know, the, the, the victim gets victimised, the criminal politician gets rewarded and promoted. It's as though everything's upside down. And we've got a big problem at the moment because I'm going to say to you that the country's actually being taken apart from the inside. Step by step, bit by bit, everything's being dismantled. Morality, our society, how we relate, how we deal with children. A lot of men are now worried that they go near children, even if it's your own children, if you go there with a camera. So all of a sudden values are being completely reversed. People who are good are beginning to feel as though they have something wrong with them. You mustn't speak to children in the street don't speak to strange people, so children are being made fearful. And it didn't used to be like that. So something's going on. And in Westminster, you'll have heard and seen and read about turmoil. How many of you feel a bit angry with the MPs stealing money? Does that make you a bit angry? Well, made, made me a bit angry as well. I'll just bring that over a snitch. But I also think something else was going on because somebody somewhere created the little trough of money for the, for the MPs to feed from. And a lot of the MPs said when they were challenged, but, but they encouraged us to take all those allowances. They said we could take them. I was told I could. A lot of them said that, didn't they? And I think they were telling the truth. Because although I believe that there are a lot of very unpleasant, corrupt, crooked and downright criminal members of Parliament, I think a lot of them were duped. They were encouraged to feed from a trough of money so that later they could be exposed. And that exposure has now created turmoil. We don't trust our MPs. The MPs are frightened of us. A lot of them are terrified. There are MPs talking about revolution. They're worried that this country is getting close to revolution. They're worried about violence on the streets. So all of a sudden, that whole episode of the MPs apparently feeding, being exposed, has actually weakened the trust between us and our MPs. I don't think I'm soft on MPs, because 
later on in the talk, I'm going to mention some of the people. And they're absolutely rotten, but I don't think they're all rotten. But I think a hidden hand is working to create turmoil in Westminster. It's got us in a tangle. Now, this one I'm going to go through really quickly, but how many of you think that you're seeing a sort of police state emerge around you? You get that feeling. Doesn't it really annoy you when you walk around and there's a camera watching you? And in Plymouth, they've done the thing now where they've connected up loudspeakers to the cameras so that they can have a child's voice, that was what was proposed, a child's voice telling you to pick up the piece of litter you dropped. When I told my teenage son about this, he said, child's voice, and I said yes, and he said, that's bloody scary. Who decided that the camera was going to be put there? Did you decide in your local area? Did anybody sit in a meeting and decide we need cameras? Or in the shopping centre? So you didn't decide, somebody else decided. Head, um, cameras on the head of a constable. So the moment you speak to them, you're on record. I'm going to go through this as quickly as I can. For those of you who are Christians, the crosses are disappearing. Come on, machine, talk to me. Fingerprinting, this is a big one. Fingerprinting of children in schools. Going on now. And when you say to parents, do you think it's a bad thing? Oh, well, I don't, I don't really see what's wrong with it. But that means that your child has now become a number on a database. And if the people who control the database are not nice people, perhaps in the future we've got a problem. And I think we've got a big problem coming. We're torturing people. Sorry it's a bit dark. We are torturing people. Guantanamo Bay, people being tortured. People being tortured inside the Metropolitan Police Headquarters. That was something that came to light. Now as a nation, perhaps it went on, but we didn't openly approve of it, and I believe that if it had been exposed 20 years ago, we would have tried to stop it. Now Mr Miliband is lying and trying to cover up the fact that this country is actually condoning torture. We got trouble with young people on the streets. And if I go back sort of 15 years ago, I was one of the people who talked about bloody youngsters on the streets causing trouble. But I've changed my opinion because I think somebody has taken away the bonds between parents and young people and the society that the young people are living in is causing the problem. And they're supposed to cause a problem because it's helping to break our society down. So I'm thinking as a military man, I'm looking at what's happening around me and I'm thinking to myself, this isn't accidental, this is planned. And then when you decide it's planned, you say, where's it going and who's doing it? And that's where I'm going to try and take you through. Houses being repossessed? Do you know the dollar's going to crash? The dollar is going to crash because the American dollar is bankrupt, totally bankrupt. World debt is about $750 trillion. So the money in your pocket is valueless. Gordon Brown's printed another $900 billion. He can't have money for schools or hospitals, the armed forces, or your local council, but he can print $900 billion to go straight into the banks. That's madness. But he's doing it. And we are letting him at the moment. And here's the police. Have we got any police in the audience? Anybody on duty but off duty? <laughs> it doesn't matter because we're getting a lot of police talking to, our, to us at the moment. And they're talking about very nasty things going on inside the police which they don't like. And they are seeing the police themselves becoming aggressive, brutal. A man, as far as I'm concerned, murdered in London, the lawyer shot. The man murdered at the demonstration, Demenzies, nobody brought to book. So at the moment the police have a license to kill. And I believe that the recent statistic that I knew, I think that's correct, is about 1,700 people in something like the last 12 years have died in police custody. 
So something's wrong in the police and we'll be having a look at what? More cameras, recycling. TV at the moment, isn't it? It's all about global warming and you've got to be very worried that we're going to overheat. I'm suspicious because carbon dioxide represents a tiny, tiny part of the atmosphere. It's something like 0.006%. And yet somebody's telling me that a change in that is affecting the whole world, but they can't predict the weather tomorrow. Can they? <laughs> they can't. They can't do it. So how can they predict what is going to happen with the temperature of this planet? I throw that in because I used to believe this rubbish until I started to think about it. So somebody, by getting you tied up with recycling, worried about whether the lid of your bin is open, which day the newspapers go out, which day the plastic goods go out, separating the glass from the tin, that's to tie your head up in knots. And while you're worried about the recycling, you're not worried about Gordon Brown printing 900 billion. So somebody is attacking your mind, and that's a military technique. You don't win wars just by bullets and guns and bombs and gas and nuclear weapons. A big chunk of it is psychological warfare. And I've read books on it. We were taught about it. And I suddenly realised about four or five years ago, somebody was doing it to me. And then when I began to see through it, all of a sudden a new world appears. So that's what we're going to have a look at. Tetra masks, maybe they make us ill. Alcohol. Isn't it funny? Pubs can't afford to get their booze in for uh, the pub to be a social amenity to an area. So publicans struggling at the moment to make their pubs run, and a lot of them are closing. At the same time, the supermarkets are selling drink more and more cheaply. And of course, we know that Tesco's and the likes are working very closely with the high levels of government. So I say to myself, is this planned? And it is. It's planned to deliberately force public houses to close, because then you haven't got a meeting place. Tesco, does anybody know what it stands for? Tessa Cohen. Tessa Cohen. Now I say that because it's an interesting fact. If you talk to one of the checkout girls and you say, what does Tesco mean? They don't know, so you say Tessa Cohen. I'm giving it to you because we're talking about families controlling 35% of the nation's food supply. I don't get a warm feeling. So think about the things around you. Fishing industry gone, farming gone, recycling, recycling. So I have to show that twice. Deathly silence. I do that just to check that you're still awake. All right, don't worry. And here we are, the EU ring of stars, because the other thing I began to notice is ever since we got involved with the EU, we seem to have problems. We don't know who we are anymore. We're always talking about Europe, and should we be in Europe or should we be out of Europe? But what's actually happening is Europe is slowly dismantling the country. But I used to think the problem was in Brussels. I used to think over there, that's where the problem is. But it's not, it's here, amongst us. Now, going around the country, I see strange things. I didn't used to notice them, but this is a man made of reed that's on the Somerset Levels. It's about um, 25, 30 foot high. Anybody seen it as you drive south on the A38? <coughs> And uh, a couple of people in the audiences have said to me, what is it? And I say, it's a wicker man. Well, that's what it is, a wicker man. It's pagan. And it was put there by the Regional Development Agency. And they paid a large sum of money. And they recently spent uh, about £50,000 rebuilding it after somebody set light to it. And they've recently spent 35000 refurbishing it because the dicky birds were beginning to take the sticks out of it. But it's a wicker man. If I'd have shown my grandma that, she'd have said, that's pagan. But that is a symbol put in place by the Regional Development Agency.